buddy of mine calls me the other day and says uh, he's having trouble running past eight miles. This is a guy who can run 30 miles any time of the day. So I tell him to come out to my house and we'll get some runs in. So he comes out, he goes, man, I'm telling you, I can't run past eight miles. But I realize in his life, he's had a new kid, more responsibilities at work, all this stuff. He's not thinking about this, I am. So I take him out for a run. We get 30 minutes into it. How far are we going, Goggins? I ain't tell him. Get an hour into it, I ain't tell him. Hour and a half into it, didn't tell him. So soon he shuts up. We run three hours. The guy does fine. Next day we go out there, he's able to run 20 miles again. So this is what happened to him. His circuit breaker blew. Our minds are very similar to circuit breakers. When they blow, you gotta figure out what it is. Sometimes you just add it too much to your fucking plate. Go back in your mind and figure it out. Stay hard. So I get a lot of emails about how do I stay motivated, hungry, driven. Well, let me tell you something. Most days in life when I wake up, I'm not motivated, hungry, or driven. I have a commitment to myself to the best version of myself. What most of us are looking for is this special fucking feeling of, oh, I feel great this morning. I'm going to get out of bed and get a quick five miles in or go to the gym. If you're looking for that feeling, let me tell you one thing, it ain't going to come. You have to learn to do when you don't want to do. Learn to bring that savage mentality out of yourself, the animalistic motherfucker. You think a savage gives a fuck about how he feels or how she feels? They just do it. Learn to be your best self when you're least motivated. Stop looking for a feeling to control what goes on in your life. You have an obstacle to overcome, so overcome the motherfucker because what's going on. So another year is coming and gone, and a lot of us are in the same fucking place we were last year. What the fuck are you waiting on? We sleep one third of our fucking lives and we think we can take fucking days off. We think we have the right to sit back and give ourselves fucking options on which way we're gonna go in life. Am I gonna run today? Am I gonna work out today? Well, it's Christmas. It's New Year's. It's my birthday. Do you think time gives a fuck that it's Christmas, that it's New Year's, that it's your birthday? You're giving yourself too many fucking options. Let me tell you one thing. Time is running out. You keep on sitting around wondering what the fuck you want to do. You're just going to run out of time. So make sure you do one thing. Stop following the fucking crowd. They may take time off, but you can't afford to. Stay hard. One of the keys to my success in life was I was able to see myself at the end of a very difficult task before I even started it. When I was 297, out of shape and afraid of water, I was able to see myself at graduation as a Navy SEAL. But as time went on, I kept on getting rolled back to day one. And every day got longer and longer. So what I had to do was I had to take this big chunk and make it small. So I became the master of the one day that I was living. We have to do that now. We don't know when the end is coming to this. So we gotta master that one day. It may keep on getting pushed back day after day. If you master that day and wanna be harder and stronger, you'll figure it out. Stay hard. So I never train with music. There's a reason why I don't do that. The music's not gonna always be there. The TV, the distractions, all these external things. I'm in the gym right now with all this loud music. People need it to get fired up. They need it to stay motivated. They need to stay in the fight. They need it to just go in the gym to do whatever they're gonna do. What do you do when you have no external motivation? It's about the internal. What do you say to yourself? How are you gonna fire yourself up? What's that flame inside of you that keeps you going? Let that keep you going, not this. We're watching people fail because we're afraid to hurt their feelings. By no means do I condone bullying. I think it's bullshit. But I will say one thing, I believe in the truth and tell the truth. 
a lot of us have loved ones, friends, people we see every day who are gaining weight, getting out of shape, not going to school, being lazy, but we're afraid to tell them the truth. Not being bullies, but afraid to tell the truth. One thing that changed my life is my grandfather. He told me, you're going nowhere in your life, not being anything. As bad as that hurt me, it got me to pull my head out of my ass. So learn to stay hard, have thick skin, and do what's right. Stay hard. There's a lot of people out there who suffer from low self-esteem. So when you suffer from low self-esteem, you allow weak people to get in your fucking head. So a good way to build that fucking self-esteem up is to get in the gym and change the way you look. And then that changes the way you feel about yourself. But the biggest thing about working out is sometimes the way you look may not be changing that fast. But we lose one thing. We lose the perspective of the training. The training is truly built on changing the mindset. So I had a Q&A this weekend. This one guy there was super frustrated. So he's like, I gained 20 pounds. I can't find my why. I can't find my purpose. I can't find motivation. Can't find a gym. He went on and on. So I said, hey, okay, relax. Just relax. Can you find your balls? Once you locate those, I need you to grab them. After you grab them, I need you to go find some shoes. If you got some shoes, you can go walk. You can go run. As far as the gym you can't find, do you have a floor where you live? Do some fucking push-ups. Do some sit-ups. We're waiting to find purpose. We're waiting to find why. We're waiting to find all this shit before we start. The thing about it is this. Start now. So when you find your fucking purpose, and you find your why, you can get after it. Stay hard. We have so many tools to put in our arsenal, to strengthen our minds, to put those calluses on our minds for when we need them. So one of those great tools is positive self-talk. Positive self-talk works well, but you gotta put the work behind it. It's gotta be the truth. Positive self-talk has to be the truth. So let's say you're taking a test hard test in college, but you haven't studied, but you have a positive mindset, you have positive self-talk going into it, chances are you're gonna fail that test. Positive self-talk doesn't work unless you put the work behind it. It's only bullshit. Put the work behind your positive self-talk. Jealousy, ignorance, and every word that means that shit will always be a part of this world. One thing that bothers me a lot is that the hate of somebody else, the ignorance of someone else, how it affects people, how we allow it to affect you. One thing that helps me out in life is I've learned to anticipate stupid. I've always been headed on, people have been jealous of me, whatever it may be, I've learned to anticipate stupid. So an example of anticipation, if I come up to you and punch you in the gut, it's going to hurt like hell. But if I warn you, you can prepare yourself for it. And in that preparation, it doesn't hurt as bad. So in life, stop letting people affect your day, affect your life, affect the outcome of what's going to happen to you. Learn to anticipate stupid. Never fight ignorance with ignorance. Fight it with intelligence. Stay hard. So about four months ago, I had a major leg surgery. I got plates and screws in my leg. That's the edema that's in it. These are my fingers. So a lot of you know I like to run. That got taken away from me for a few months. But who cares? Life will not always be 70 and sunny. Life is the ultimate competitor. 
It's relentless. It will continue to attack you when you least expect it. We must learn to adapt and overcome to any and all obstacles that are in front of us. We have to evolve. And the way I evolved was I changed my diet. Had to start doing a lot more cross training. When the obstacle gets in front of you, don't let it stop you. Don't let it deter you. Now get around that motherfucker. The other day, I'm watching this basketball game. Team was down by two points with a minute to go. Guy comes down the court, missed the game time field goal. He immediately puts his head down. All I'm thinking about is, man, get back in the fucking game. Get back on defense. Where am I going with this? The other day, I put a video up about my leg, all that edema. I saw some good comments, saw some bad comments. One comment in particular, it stated, be careful who you listen to. You're right. Be careful who you listen to. That very motherfucker you listen to might just keep you on your fucking ass your entire life. I ain't hear no whistle blow in my life. So I'm gonna keep on playing. Looking for every opportunity I can. Be different. Hey, I'm not crazy. I'm just not you. Stay hard. 20 years ago, I graduated SEAL training. So one of the guys I was in training with came down to visit me. He was amazed at how I kept the same routine I had 20 years ago. Waking up early, going to the gym, getting after it, going back in the afternoon. I could tell he felt bad. So he started to explain to me why he can't do it anymore. Talked about travel, talked about work. So he started asking me, how the hell do you fucking do this shit every fucking day? I said, I don't fucking negotiate with myself. Most of us come out here, we explain away why we can't do shit, and we stick in this negotiation process in our mind. You can't negotiate these things. They're definite. Stay hard. The most important step we'll ever take in life is our next one. But a lot of us get our feet stuck in concrete. We get our feet stuck in concrete because we're afraid to make enemies. We're afraid of speaking what's on our mind. We're afraid of being in that group of people. And when you walk away, we're afraid of what they might say behind your back. All that fear clouds your brain, clouds your thinking. One thing in life, you're gonna always have haters. Embrace them. If you can walk on fucking water, trust me, your haters will say, you can walk on water because you can't fucking swim. Learn one thing, shut the fucking noise out. Embrace the fact that people don't like you. It means you're doing something right. Stay hard, stay in the fight. Sometimes we can be in such a bad spot in our lives that the only answer is to say fuck it and go for broke. In my life, 27 years ago, I was in that spot and this guy asked me a question yesterday. What was the question, Jennifer? He asked if you're paying the price physically now for what you put your body through. Am I paying the price? So my answer was yes, I am. But what he didn't know was literally, I stepped back at 297 pounds, looked in the accountability mirror, and I saw a reflection I didn't like. It wasn't so much the outside, it was a lot of the inside. So that bothered me. And I was willing to do whatever it took to change that reflection. You gotta find out what you're willing to do to change the reflection in the accountability mirror. So I get one question a lot. It's how that go from 297 to 191 and not get a lot of flat in the skin. So how I did it was doing 100 reps, 200 reps, and 300 reps on machines like this. So what I would do is I go to the gym three days a week and I keep my, my pace up real fast. My repetition is quick, quick pace to keep my heart rate up, burning calories, and also driving through, getting that muscle burn. And my only resting position would be in the up position, and I rest a little longer than 10 seconds, breathe, 
and get back at it again. So it sucks a lot. Lightweight, get after it. So my first 100 mile race I did, I was actually doing 500 reps. I brought this workout back with a guy named Sledge from the book. And uh, we were doing a lot of reps, no running at all. So I believe that's what allowed me to do so well my first 100 mile race, even though I shit on myself. Stay hard. So there's different leadership styles. One right now is in this week in society. It's the instant gratification. Give a pat on the back the second they do anything. Show them that they're doing a good job. Guess what? There's a lot of things in life that don't deserve a pat on the back. A pat on the back comes when you overachieve things that you're supposed to do. In life, there's a lot of things we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be our fucking best. We're supposed to get up early. We're supposed to work out. We're supposed to be uncomfortable. We're supposed to do all these fucking things that people are now looking for a fucking pound on the back. How about this leadership style? Instead of people buying into the fucking pound on the back, buying into this shit right here, buying into the fact that, guess what? Instead of looking for a pound on the back, let me look at being a better team person. Let me look at better self. Let me look at doing a better family, all this other shit. Look at being the person that you're not looking for a pound on the back, but you're leading from the front, knowing one thing. As a human being, we're supposed to do these things. Most of us live our entire lives avoiding failure. It's funny. I walk around, people come up to me and they say, man, you're that Navy SEAL, you went through Ranger School, you were, you know, Air Force Tac P, you know, you um, did the pull-up record, you run all these ultra races, all this shit, man. The funny thing about it that I think about is this. They know that part of me. This is the part I know about myself. I felt the ASVAB test to get in the military three times. In the Air Force, I felt at pararescue. In the SEALs, it took me three times to get through Navy SEAL training. The pull-up record took me three times. This is what I know about me. So what I'm saying is this. You can't live your life being afraid to fail. All those failures made me the success in the day. Stay hard. Stay in the fight. There's a lot of successful people in this world who still feel empty inside. And they wonder why they still feel empty. So they try to make another million, two million, three million. Let's buy a new car, a new house, a new boat. Let's buy more of everything. In the day, they still feel real empty inside. For me, I wasn't even fucking successful. I just felt empty. So I was trying to hide my insecurities, my doubts, all this bullshit. So I was trying to dress up a turd. And when you try to dress up a turd, you're still a turd. It's like a turkey. You get a turkey for Thanksgiving. If you don't know what you're doing, you cook that motherfucker without going inside and cleaning it out. You got to clean the insides out before you start dressing it up. Same thing with life. If you don't get inside your soul, inside your heart, and fix it, be willing to go to war with yourself. Stay hard. So the other day I went out for a run. And I see this young man. He passes me, he comes back, catches me. Gets beside me. Starts giving me his resume about his life. He's going through talking about everything he's done. He gets to the point where he says, I just graduated college with 3.8 GPA. I ask him, what's next? He gives me a look like he's bewildered, kind of say congratulations. I said what's next because basically, if you have a long laundry list of fucking shit you want to accomplish in life, you sit back and you're very happy. You sit back on your accomplishments and say, wow, it's like a nice warm blanket. It's nice and comfortable. You don't want to do it anymore. A lot of us have these I love me walls, certificates, trophies, plaques. I put all that shit in storage. As a reminder, I have more to do. Greatness is something you're in every fucking day. Hey, kid, I'm proud of you. Stay hard, but keep on fucking working. The truth of the starting line. We live in a world that's very unauthentic. So who the fuck are you? What do you stand for? What do you believe in? You know, a lot of people don't like what I say. A lot of people hate that I cuss. A lot of people hate a lot of things about me. I don't give a shit. When you find out who you are, that's when you start living your life. Don't fit in just for the sake of fitting in in life. Make sure that you have something to say, say it. Social media nowadays is one of the biggest 
forms of being fake in the world. People buy likes, people buy friends, people buy comments, all this fucking bullshit. Make sure in life you do what you have to do, say what you have to say, and live the life you have to live. Don't walk around being a fake human being. Don't be scared to be who you are. Stay hard. We have two voices in our mind, and boy, I know they're fucking true. I've heard them, I hear them now, ha <laughs> ha. And they're real. It's that one voice, that voice I used to love to fucking hear, that we love to hear. It's that soft motherfucker. That soft motherfucking voice that says, sleep the fuck in. It's okay. It's that coddling voice. You wanna be hugged and nurtured and all that shit that says it's gonna be okay. Well, there's another motherfucking voice that wakes you up in the middle of the night. It's not your girlfriend. It's not your boyfriend. It's that demon fucking voice that whispers in your fucking ear that says, get up, motherfucker. You're not fucking good enough. You gotta work fucking harder. You haven't put enough time in. It's that voice you wanna run away from. It's that voice you don't wanna fucking hear. But guess what? It's that voice you need to fucking listen to. Stay hard, listen to the whisper. So when I was growing up, I went through a lot of hard times. This guy came to me and gave me some advice. His advice was, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. I waited for years for that motherfucker. I never saw the light. When I joined the military, I did a bunch of night ops. A chopper would land, we'd all get off it. Had to lay down, not move for 30 minutes. When I first landed, I couldn't see shit. After being there for a while, I can make out objects. When you're in that tunnel of life, it's dark as fuck. There may not be a light. When you get the courage to stay there long enough, you can make out objects. When you can make out objects, you can see way to get the fuck out of that tunnel. Stay hard. Stay savage. So a few years ago, I used to work on an ambulance. And we pulled up to some horrific car accidents. And we had to assess the scene. And we had this golden hour. That golden hour is very important. We had to get people loaded in the ambulance and get in the hospital. Every morning of our lives, we were in that golden hour. We are assessing the scene of our own personal lives. Are we fat? Are we lazy? Do we not want to accomplish anything in life? You have to assess yourself. After you assess yourself, you have to formulate a plan. That plan is to fix what the fuck is wrong with you. If you don't do that in life, you will continue just to lay there and die and rot away. So make sure you do one thing for yourself in life. Make sure you save yourself. Assess yourself and fix the problem. Stay hard. This is not a political statement at all. But this is one thing. When you make America tough again. When I was a junior in high school, I failed to go to the summer conditioning program for basketball. I was cocky. I thought I'd still make the team. First day of trials come. I'm out there balling out. I go look at the list the next day who was on the cut list. I was on the cut list. If I hurt my feelings, I have to accept the fact that I hold myself accountable for not showing up. Nowadays, I hear they're trying to do it with cuts. Cutting kids for sports. We're doing them injustice. While we're trying to protect them from failure and from failing, life does not do that. If you're not good enough, teach them how to be better. Teach their minds. Don't give them a trophy for just participating. Stay hard. Stay in the fight. So I got a lot of questions over the holidays. The one major question I got was, how do I finish what I start? I get two weeks into it, and then I stop. Well, this is the thing about it. People forget one thing about me. I used to be you. I used to be a fat guy. I got that didn't care much. I got that got D's and F's in school. I got that blamed other people. I got that was under, under mediocre. I wasn't even average. So this is the thing about it. I want to tell you what people don't want to tell you. Why you stop is because you're lazy. It's because you don't mind getting bad grades in school. 
It doesn't bother you enough to be mediocre, to be average, to sit around and watch people do great things. You don't mind it. So there's your answer. Your answer is you don't care enough about yourself so you don't stay in the fight. Stay hard. So years ago, I was scared to death to fucking fly. So my mentality is this. If you're scared of something, learn about it. Figure it out to overcome it. So I went out and got lessons on how to fly. I'm up in the plane with a pilot. We hit some bad turbulence and I freaked out. And the pilot said, there's one thing you can't ever do up here. And that's forget to fucking fly the plane. In life, it's a true statement. We have hard times, we hit turbulence, we fail, we fall on our ass, we have divorces, we have all kind of bullshit that happens. And we sit there and think about that one issue and it, it's all we think about. And we forget to fly the plane, the plane is us. We forget to focus on everything in life, our habits, our goals, our destination. And we end up failing, so stay hard. A lot of us are off work today, celebrating a man who fought for equality for all. While we have a long, long, long way to go, and this world isn't fair, it's fair enough. I see a lot of blacks, whites, women, lesbians out here grinding, getting after it, very fucking successful. So where's your excuse? I see a lot of finger pointing, Tons of people blaming other people for different shit. One big thing is this, fear. Fear keeps a lot of motherfuckers from being successful. It keeps you making excuses for yourself. Fear lives one place and one place only, and that's in your mind. Martin Luther King had a dream. Don't let fear fuck yours up. Stay hard. I just got a 17 hour flight. I'm sitting there thinking, take a day off, no one will know. But I keep on thinking too, there's always someone out there who's working harder than you. I'm haunted by that motherfucker. Knowing that that someone out there is willing to forgo personal desires and comforts, forgo sleep, forgo whatever it takes to be better, to be the best. In life, a lot of times, a lot of us have that person out there. There may not be a name, or a face to him, but he exists. You make sure in life when they think about that person, you make sure they put a name and a face to it. You make sure the name and face is yours. You do the haunting. Get in somebody's head. Own space. In those times when you want to quit, because we're all human, you make sure you remember one thing. All those times and hours and days you sacrifice to be the best. Stay hard. Well, on a hike, in the middle of nowhere, out in the woods, you look up and you see a tree out in the distance. You see a dog tied up to that tree. You can tell by looking at it, it's a domesticated dog. As you get closer to it, you want to unchain the dog and save it. But as you get close to it, the dog is angry. The dog has eaten in days. So his mentality's changed. That dog has become a fucking savage. In life, it's important for us to stay hungry. That hunger changes your mentality. You go from being domesticated to being a savage. Make sure you're on that fucking seat at the table. When the devil goes to bed at night, make sure he checks on the bed for you. Stay hard. If you can dream, and not make dreams your master. We all have dreams. I had them when I was younger. So I figured the best place to make those dreams come true are in isolation. So I walked into isolation as David Goggins, but I walked out of isolation as Goggins. When you become a savage is in isolation. When you train it for a big MMA fight, or just a boxing match. You don't stay outside of isolation. You go in isolation. And that's when your mind changes. That's when your focus changes. Your dedication changes. Don't use this time to fuck up your mind. 
Use it to gain strength, gain focus. Isolation is the key to strengthen your mind. Come on, a savage. Growing up, my dad did a good job of dehumanizing me. He didn't care much how I thought or how I felt. So when I saw the military uniform when I was growing up, I thought to myself, if I can get that uniform on, I would find honor in wearing the uniform. So not only did I want to be in the military, I wanted to be in special ops. But I realized to be in special ops, you gotta know how to swim. So I got a how-to book on swimming. The first page was easy, float. So I went to the pool, tried to float. I sank right down to the bottom. I realized I was negative buoyant as hell. The more I failed, the more my father's words were creeping to my mind about how I'm not good enough. All this other bullshit he said to dehumanize me. As time went on, I started realizing the more I didn't quit, the more self-respect I gained. And the power was all mine. In life, it's important to do one thing. Many people will try to dehumanize you. It's up to you to find self-respect and dignity in yourself. You don't need a uniform to have honor. You need to have pride in yourself, dignity, stay hard. What's up? <laughs> exactly, what are you doing here? I, uh... My fucking legs don't work, my knees are all fucked up. So I gotta find something that does. We're all being tested in life. Some of us lay the fuck down. Others find a way around the motherfucker. So, I found a way around the motherfucker. In life, it's not about failing. Failing's inevitable. It's about keeping the fucking motivation to keep moving forward on the same exact path that you just failed. So that's what the fuck I'm doing, Jennifer. People wouldn't believe me if I didn't find this shit. I get a lot of questions about how I stay in shape with all my travel. Here's one of my secrets. I have 10 minutes between sessions right now. So I got to my hotel room, got my room, and I'm gonna knock out some core exercises. Boy, we love to compromise our life. We love to say we don't have time. The body is truly amazing. It can handle almost anything you throw at it. It's the mind, the mind that is lacking, the mind. As I always say, it's trying to find that easy way out. Yesterday, I put up on my site, go to davidgoggins.com to get a free read on my introduction. You guys crashed my server. It's back up. Go there. Check it out. Boy, I can tell bad times are right around the corner again. I can tell by all the emails I'm getting talking about. I can't get a break in life. I hate that damn mentality, but I can't get a break. You aren't giving any breaks in life. You make them for yourself. We are all being tested in life. While my test is different than yours, you will be tested. And how you face that test and how you overcome that test determines the rest of your life. The one mentality that you must have in life is that regardless of what's in front of you, you still must grind. I'll never be in the Olympics. I'll never be a professional athlete, but still I grind. I fail at most things I do, but still I grind. I don't wanna do half the shit I do, but still I grind. And that one day, you see me down a dark alley, running at one o'clock in the morning, no one thing. I was grinding. Stay hard. I got big goals this year, but in true godless fashion, there will always be setbacks. So people think I killed that 300 pound man of mine. Oh no, 
He lurks. That's my inner bitch. Whenever I'm in a setback or defeated, he pops up in my mind. Every morning I wake up and get a nice green smoothie. Get after it. This morning, I smell the kitchen, baking and eggs cooking. That big boy in my mind, he's always waiting with a knife and fork in one hand. Bib on there so he don't get all fucked up. Wait and call me back to the dark side. Oh no, not today, motherfucker. I know how you look. I know how you sound. There'll always be complications and setbacks before the finish line. We must be ready for them. Ha <laughs> ha, stay hard. Once again, it's on. Motherfuckers wanna know where Goggins has been. I've been in that mental lab. See, there's all kind of months. Some folks got sober October. They get all kinds of shit for people go through trying to better themselves. I got fuck you every day. Get after it every day mentality. That said, when you push that hard, you go to the well. Well, my well was fucking empty. The cookie jar in there had stale moldy cookies. They weren't working no more. Had to find something else. Had to get that conqueror's mindset back. Where I just don't give a shit about anything. This fucking grind. A lot of people out there talk about they're missing something in their lives. And they don't know what the fuck it is. You don't know what it is because you live in a soft environment 24 seven. Learn to get out of it. Stay hard. This is my third workout of the day. So it's supposed to be a cool down workout. But this cat wanted to start racing somebody. So he started racing me. He didn't know who the fuck he was racing. He didn't know it was me. I'm under an alias. See, a lot of motherfuckers, when they think it's me or somebody else and they want to chase, they got a carrot in front of them. He had no carrot. It was him versus him. I'm under some fucking initials. He want to test my resolve. He want to test my ability to go to the limit. He want to see where his world ends and mine begins. This ain't no fucking game. This is my motherfucking lifestyle, son. Hey, yeah, I'm fired up. This is what I do. When someone gives you hell, make sure you push them right back and give them hell. Stay hard. So we live in a, if it helps me to help you world, I help you. If you tag four people to follow me, I'll give you a gift type of shit. Well, I'm not here to do that. I don't need nothing from you. But what I'm gonna do for you is this. If you email me at Merry Christmas at DavidGoggins.com. When you email me, Leave me your phone number. I'm going to give you a call. So the first hundred people that email me, I'll call you up. I'm going to leave a video every day for the next four days at different times. And once again, the first hundred people every day, you're going to get a call from me. Leave me your number. Email me. Merry Christmas at David Dodgers. Stay hard. that time of year again, Thanksgiving and Christmas, where we all start going to parties, start taking time off, eat more food, work out less, study less, and just have a good time. That's all fine, but we still have a responsibility to ourselves to hold ourselves accountable and not feel sorry for ourselves. They work so hard during the year. Take these time, you have more days off of work, to spend time with your family. Find some time to get after it. Find some time to get in the gym, study more, improve yourself. Forget New Year's resolutions, start today. Before I joined the military, I hated the water, so I had to go practice. So every morning I wake up, I go to the pool. Before I jumped in that water, I put my toe in the water to feel how cold it was. Me doing that was my silent protest. It was me feeling sorry for myself. It was me being a little bitch. And I realized if you're gonna do something, anything in life, you better attack it. A lot of us are going through wanting to be better, wanting to find more. And what we're doing is we're 
putting our toe in the water of life to see how cold it is. We're not attacking anything. We're going at it half-assed. There's one thing for sure. A lot of us think we can rise to the occasion. When you can't, you fall back on your training. And if your training sucks, so will you. Stay hard. One thing I found out in my life, I used to always want people to accept me and like me. So I became who they were. If you like something and I ain't like it, I liked it because you liked it. Become unapologetic of who the fuck you are in your life. If you get after it and you're a hard motherfucker, get after it. You gotta make yourself better than what you think you are. And what that requires is people to not fucking understand you, not know you, not get you at all. Look at you like you're off. Look at you like you have a problem. Don't worry about that shit. Be unapologetic. Get after it. Stay hard. Be who the fuck you are. All right, so I'm in the Atlanta airport, and my goal is to do a thousand push-ups a day for the next 30 days. I'm traveling a lot. I'm constantly go. I'm fighting fires doing speaking gigs, trying to get my book finished up. I'm nowhere near gyms, stuff like that. So there's no excuses. Commercial breaks, wherever you're at, it's all about finding time to get it done. And the best thing about it all is <laughs> you're in the airport and most people nowadays are totally clueless and unaware that I'm in the corner doing push-ups because everybody's on the daggone phones. So no excuses in life, commercials everywhere else. Get it in. Well, I'm on my way back right now. I'm going a half mile out, I'm going a half mile back. One thing I found out in life is, if you want to get better, do the shit that no one else wants to do. Do the shit that no one else is even thinking about doing. Do the shit that people think is fucking stupid. It makes no sense. Because all you're doing is getting better. I tell you right now, the more things you can do, get outside that zone. That zone is that zone that makes you feel good. The stronger your mind's gonna get. It starts getting used to doing shit like this. It's not fun, my mind's used to it. Yo, I used to be mentality. I talked to this guy the other day. He talked to me about how he used to run a sub three hour marathon. While that's impressive, no one cares that she used to run a sub three hour marathon. The whole thing is, what have you done today? No one cares what you did yesterday. You gotta change your dialogue. The I used to be mentality doesn't work. What have you done today to better yourself? What will your story be tomorrow? Let me tell you something. Those that criticize others, they really got something going on with themselves, which is why they're criticizing you. Quick story. Had some family come in town, eating some breakfast. Goggins is nowhere to be found. I'm out for a little workout, a little run. I come back in for my run. Here come the jokes. Oh, let me guess, you were out running. You probably gotten 100 miles this morning. All the sarcasm bullshit, you know how it goes. I annoy people and they let me know about it. I never say shit to them, but they have no idea how annoying it is to me. Every morning I wake up, 
I get a chance to see your lazy ass in bed. Stay hard. A few weeks ago, I was in the gym working out, and this NBA player walks in with his trainer. I could tell by the exercise they were doing, he was used to doing just 12 reps. Because when the trainer said, let's do 15 today, he got a little attitude. It became very clear to me on why he was a bitch warmer. Having that bare minimum fucking attitude would keep your ass on that bench. If he heard what kind of bitch he was being that moment, he wouldn't have said it. It motivated me though. It was locked in my brain, it's still there now, on how we sounded. It kept me in the gym for two hours. The thing about it is this, it's not just the three reps that he fails to fucking recognize. It's what happens in those three fucking reps that make you better. Never do the bare minimum. Stay hard. This isn't for anyone looking for a break. There is no finish line, so stop looking for one. Don't believe if you work your ass off that one day you'll hit that finish line. There's only one finish line in life, and that is death. We must find our limits in everything we do and push slightly beyond it. Remember this. Just because you worked your ass off, it doesn't mean you will achieve what you've been working for. Very few of the mindset to work your ass off with no guarantee of success. Never expect immediate results. Have an endurance mindset. You're going to stay in the suck longer than anyone else. True victory comes when there are no crowds and no finish lines. The real victory is your willingness to work your ass off while no one is watching you. Stay hard. When I was in training, we had a guy with this funky ass attitude. Brought it every day. It was contagious. He just wouldn't fucking go away. He wouldn't quit. So I knew there's one evolution out there that he'd think about quitting on. It was called Steel Pier. They lay you on this steel pier. They hold you down. It's windy and cold in San Diego. They put you in the water and you repeat that cycle. When the water tread, he looks at me and goes, Goggins, you want to quit? I go, yeah, let's get the fuck out of here, man. We walk to the bell. He rings it. He looks at me, waiting for me to ring it. I said, well, stay a little longer. Have fun in your civilian life. Hey, you got a bad attitude? Stay at home. Only thing more contagious than a good attitude is a bad one. Stay hard. We're all skating on thin ice. We're telling people the truth. A lot of people come up to me talking about their loved ones gaining weight, their loved ones being depressed, etc. So many things that they're telling me, but they're not willing to tell them. So we walk around all the time, allowing our family members, our loved ones, to be depressed, to be fat. So we rather see them having diabetes, having depressed mindsets so they can't find their best selves. We wouldn't live with that. We're worried about them being upset with us. Let me tell you this. I'd rather someone hate me and get better than like me and stay the same. So in life, we got a system to make. Don't have these sidebar conversations behind people's backs. Make sure you tell them that they can get better, that they can do better. And there's a way of doing it. Stay hard.